Hey guys, let's check how strong is a password with JavaScript. A strong password must contain numbers, lowercase letters, uppercase letters and special characters. With this in mind, we are going to code an application which will measure how many of those character types are included in a password and return the strength. Let's see how we do this. In my projects folder, I have an index file, a script.js file, which is an empty JavaScript file, and a styles.css file, in which I have already typed the CSS code. I will not go through the whole CSS code, but I will mention the important stuff that we use in combination with JavaScript. Now, let's go to the index file. In here, I have a basic HTML structure with a link to my style sheet and a script tag pointing to my JavaScript file. Now let's build our application. I need a form element and inside the form I need a div element which will act as a container. Everything related with the password will be inside this container. And also I will have a submit button, which we are not going to use in this tutorial, but since we have a form element, let's have also a submit button. Now let's go inside the password container and write everything that is related to the password field. First, we are going to have the input fields label. Next, we are going to have the input element, which has a name of password and an ID of password field. We are going to use the ID attribute in the JavaScript file to target the element. Next, we are going to have the strength container element. This is the element that will pop up next to the password and will display the strength bar and the password description. By default, the strength container element is hidden. The display property in the, CS in the CSS file is set to none. The first element that we have inside the strength container is, is the title element. Inside the title element, we have a span element with a class of strength text. Again, we are going to use JavaScript to display the strength text in the element's body. Next, we have the strength bar wrapper, and inside we have the strength bar. The width of the strength bar is set to zero in the CSS code. We will manipulate the width from the JavaScript file accordingly to the strength of the password. Next, in a P tag, we have the information that the user needs to insert a strong password. And last, we have a div element with a class of arrow. We are going to manipulate this element to look like an arrow in the CSS code. And that is all the HTML code we need. Now let's bring the browser in the screen and let's check out what we have done so far. Let's change the window to the current page and reload. We see the password field and the submit button, but we cannot see the strength pop-up window because as we said, it is set to display none in the CSS file. Now we will go to the script.js file to write the JavaScript code. First of all, I will set some global variables which, will we, which we will use throughout the code. I will target the password input element using the elements ID attribute and I will store the returned object to the password variable. I will do the same thing with the strength container. Also, I need access to the strength bar so I can set the width. At last, I need access to the strength text span element in which we will display how strong or weak is the password. Next I will take the password input element and I will assign an on-focus event listener. This means that every time we click inside the password field we will target the strength container and make it visible by setting the display property to block. Remember that the display property of the strength container is set to none in the CSS file. Next I will take again the password input element and this time I will target the on blur event. This means that every time we click away from the input element, we set the strength container's display property back to none. And this will hide the pop-up window. Let's open the browser and see if it works. I need first to reload the page and click inside the password field. Nice, the strength container element is visible. And if I click anywhere outside the password field, the pop-up window disappears. And it's visible again. Nice. Now let's go back to the JavaScript file and continue the script. 
Now, next I'm going to write a function named setStrength. This function will grow or shrink the strength bar depending on the value that we pass in as an argument. Let's say we have a value of 20. Inside the function, we are going to target the strength bar's width and set it equal to the value which is 20. And we convert the value to a percentage. This means that the strength bar is showing us 20% of its width. Hope it makes sense. Next, we have a function with a name of set color and text. This function will set the color and the text accordingly to the password's strength. Next, we have a function named clear strength. This function will set the strength bar's width to zero, the background color to its default. This means whatever background color the element has in the CSS file and the strength text to an empty string. Next, we're gonna take again the password field and assign another event listener. This time we are going to target the key up event. This means that every time we release a key on the keyboard, the check password strength function will run. So let's write the function. The first thing that I will do inside the function is to create a variable named strength and I will set its value to zero. The value of the strength variable will change within the function depending on the strength of the password. Next, I will check the password field for any empty value. If this is the case, I will call the clear strength function and I will stop the function here by returning false. Next, I will check if the password contains any white space. If so, I will call the set color and text function and I will set the color to red and the message to white space is not allowed and a return false. Next, I will check if the password contains any angle brackets. If it does, I will call again the set, and color, set color and text function and I will set the color to red and the message to angle brackets are not allowed. And again a return false to stop the function here. After the angle brackets, I will check the password's length and if it, and if it is over 20, 12 characters, I will set the color to red and the message to password is greater than 12 characters. And of course, I will return false to stop the function. Let's check the code so far in the browser. Let's reload the page so that changes in the JavaScript file can take effect and click inside the password field. Let's type the word password but with a space between. We see the message that white space is not allowed. Let's insert angle brackets. Nice, angle brackets are not allowed. And if the password is greater than 12 characters long, we get the error message. Nice, so far so good. Now let's go back to the JavaScript file and continue our function. The next step is to check if the password is less than seven characters long. If so, we set the strength to 20, the color to red, and the text to too short. But if the password's length is greater than seven characters long, we will use an else statement and start to measure the password's strength. Now a strong password must contain lowercase letters, uppercase letters, numbers, and special characters. So now we are going to check how many of those four character types are included in a password. And based on the result, we will determine the password's strength. Okay, we are going to start first and check if the password contains any lowercase letters. If this is true, we store the result in the lowercase variable. The lowercase variable evaluates also as true. This means that we can use the variable in an if statement. You will see this later. Next, we are going to check for any uppercase letters and store the result in the uppercase variable. Next, we are going to check if the password contains any numbers. And last, we search the password for any special characters. Now let's use those variables and let's define a weak password. A weak password contains only one of the four character types. So we use an if statement to check if the password contains only one character type. If so, we set the strength to 40, the color to red and the text to weak. Next, we define a medium password. A medium password has two of the four character types. So in this if statement, we have any possible combination of two character types. We have lowercase and uppercase, lowercase and numbers, lowercase and special characters, and so on. 
So if the password has only two character types, we set the strength to 60, the color to orange and the text to medium. Next we define a strong password. A strong password has three of the four character types. So in this if statement we have any combination of three character types. If this is the case we set the strength to 80, the color to light green and the text to strong. And last we have a very strong password which contains all four character types. If this is true we set the strength to 100, the color to green and the text to very strong. And last, outside the else statement, we call the set strength function and pass in as an argument the strength variable. And that's it, we have finished the application. Let's open the browser and run a last test. Let's type in some numbers. Lowercase letters, an uppercase letter and a special character. Everything is working fine. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you liked the video. See you in the next one.